and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. So in a previous video we looked at how to make a construction of granny squares to make a neck opening for a poncho. So we did that in the lavender and roses poncho construction tutorial video. Then the next video we reduced the neck so I showed you how to make sure that you could make the neck opening smaller so the poncho would fit you better or the recipient. And in this video, also, we did do one row of the body of the stitch in that construction video. I am going to show you properly how to do the rest of the poncho. So I'm just going to give you all the principles that you need to be able to you know, sort of work down from the construction of the squares. Now, of course, that is the part that is going to fit around your body. And again, you need to make that to the size that you think you're going to need. So if it's for yourself, keep trying it on. If it's for um, a recipient, ask for measurements so you know how long to make it. So let's get started. So here I have that uh, <laughs> wildly coloured poncho um, and I am going to use that again, of course, today just so I can show you really clearly um, how it all works. So like I said, we've done this construction, we've got the neck down, now we are going to concentrate on the body. So what I like to do is sort of hold it upside down almost and then work your way around the edge of the poncho like this. Now, if you look at the whole construction, I don't know whether I can fit it in, you will see that there are two points, right? So these two here. This is your front tip, this is your back tip. This is where you are going to do corners. So a corner, in my case here, is made up of two double crochets, two chains and two double crochets. So each time you reach that, you are going to do that particular stitch sequence and again here as well okay in between here it's just a row basically so you work from corner to corner to corner okay and in this one here as you can see I did rows of double crochet and then I did rows of boxes, what I call boxes. It's a double crochet and a chain one, double crochet, chain one. So I'm going to explain how to do that here as well, because this is the kind of sort of body of a poncho, you know, the rows that you need to do that I think go well with the square. And of course, the square was the Ophelia square. So the green here, which I see as leaves, I kept on doing as leaves here as well. So, you know, it's sort of, you know, ties it all together. So let's start with <laughs> taking our example here again. And of course, I've used crazy colours here and I'm going to use crazy colours again uh, for the body of the poncho here. Uh, but of course, you know, you can use these colours. Uh, you can make up your own palette, of course, whatever you want, or just use the one colour. Okay, so basically, really, we've done a yellow row here. So uh, for that first row, uh, you just needed to here work out how many stitches you were going to put in. So that was in the previous video. So do go and have a look at that. Um, that was the construction uh, video. Because obviously, you know, that's sort of the first row that you have to do just to get established. And from now on, really, it's there's no problem. You, you just do the corners and the sides, as I showed you just earlier. Now, the rows of double crochet, that's fine. You can just start wherever you want. The rows where you're doing your boxes, you will have to work out that it works out at the corners. So you best start in a corner but that's not where we're at for the moment because apple is my box row and so we're going to here we're going to get started with the magenta because that is the order that I can see them in here so here this row you can just start anywhere but I still do like to start and like I said hold it upside down that's just I'd, it makes sense to me 
uh, I still do like to start on the corner because then all your ends are in the same place and you just sew them in. It's easier to find them then. And there you go. It just makes sense to start on the corner. There we go. OK, so I did my slip knot and I started with a standing double crochet. And as you do in the corner, you do your two double crochets, two chains and two double crochets. And then really all you need to do is place a double crochet on top of the double crochets all along the side. But as we have been doing in this square here, we have been skipping one stitch here. So I am still going to be skipping this one and also this one here. It's just something, you know, that I do. You might not need to. It's maybe because of my tension. But try it and see how you do with skipping those. And then really it's just picking up under the V's and doing your stitches. Look at that. And I am nearly at the other tip of the poncho. And yeah, so this was my closing before. So I'm just going to skip that one and then do that one. So I have skipped one of those two, so that's fine. And now I am doing my corner here. Two double crochets, two chains and two double crochets. There we go. See, look at that. And so now I've done this one side and now I'm going to do the second side. Skip one and there we go. And off we go again. So I'm at the end of the row. This is the one that we are skipping. So we're going to go to those two double crochets from the corner. That first standing double crochet always closes up for me, so I can't get in there. But the first V that I can see here, that's where I'm going to go in and I am going to do a slip stitch there. OK, and that is the end of the row here and the end of my colour. And I am going to just cut it off, pull it out and leave it like that until I sew it in. Now the next colour is going to be the boxers row. So I am going to start so I know where I am again in the corner. OK, so you make your slip knot, whichever way you normally do it, insert your hook. And with a standing double crochet, so you yarn over, you go into the corner and you do your double crochet like so. You're going to get started by doing your two double crochets, two chains and two double crochets. OK, so we've made the corner. So now to get started for my boxes row, we are going to chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one. Skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. And by starting in the corner, you know that you're sort of in the right place there, that you've ended up in the right place. Now, of course, this is a multiple of two. So it might not work out towards the end. When you reach the next corner, it might not work out. But as it is a multiple of two, it's not going to be that difficult to, you know, fudge a stitch. <laughs> um, to have to count and make sure that you are going to do this in a row 
of even stitches it's just you know to me that's just too much of a pain um it's easily done to just you know make sure it works out i mean even if you do end up counting your stitches and everything um you know you might lose one you might skip one by accident and then you're still in trouble <laughs> so i would rather take the chance <laughs> And just enjoy my crochet and just, you know, make it work out towards the end. Crochet is very forgiving. Very forgiving. Okay, let me get to the other side, to the other tip there. And let me see if I have managed to do this properly. Okay, we are nearly there. Let's see if it's going to work out. Um, well, you know, we should have skipped this one and put it in here, but we skipped one there anyway, so I just going into the corner there. It's not going to be that obvious that that little uh, box is bigger there. Uh, the one from the corner might just make up for that look. There we go. I don't think that looks wrong. And of course, then you start your next side. So here we did the chain and then we skipped this one and we started here. So I'm going to do the same on this side as I did before. And fingers crossed, it's going to end the same way as the one before as well. So I will see you on the other side. nearly at the end and I think it's going to work out perfectly all right so that's fine you know so I have to skip one here then I'm skipping one here so I have to do one here this is where I started and where I've sewn in the end so I'm just going to go in between here and that's perfectly all right there we go see look doesn't look wrong chain one and then we do that slip stitch again there we are see you just have to do what you can, um, you know, it's the construction is such that, you know, you sort of need to work with what you've got there. OK, so there we are. That's what it looks like now. Now, of course, we have done this row. Now we're going to do another row of double crochets. So now we are going to have to decide where we are going to put those double crochets because you now have to choose. Do you put two? around the chain space or do you put one in the stitch and one around the chain space see this is what i mean so one in the stitch and one around the chain space one in the stitch run around the chain space and i think i did it like that everywhere and i think i did try one row no i didn't actually uh, but i can do that now so let's just have a look at what it would look like if we were to do either the one in the stitch and then the one around the chain space or two around the chain space. Makes sense to just try it out. And that's what you can do as well. You know, sometimes when you do these things and you make these things, what do you think looks the best? What do you think looks the nicest? So once again, I am just going to get started in that corner with my two double crochets, two chains and two double crochets. I've, oh, Goodness me, I've used the outside of that cake. Never mind. <laughs> I'll just have to unroll it. <laughs> See, again, that's what happens. <laughs> OK, so we're skipping the first one. Then we're putting one in there because we have a stitch there to put it in. And then what shall I do? Let's just put one around and one in to start with. One around and one in I mean it just depends on you know what you like the look of really so this is what it looks like when you're doing one around and then one in the stitch okay and now let's do two in the chain space 
And I mean, that could even give us a different look. It could give the whole poncho a different sort of vibe even. You can tell there is a little bit of a difference here to here. Actually, I quite like this look. <laughs> now she says after doing the whole poncho like this but yeah i mean you know see what you like and see which one you might find easier to do or which one you just fancy doing and then of course once you've done this row you're back at doing a couple of more rows of just double crochets on top of the double crochets and then eventually you'll be doing those boxes again and because of the way this looks because you're putting a row of boxes in between two rows of double crochets it looks like they're these little sort of stitches just float um, and I quite I really really like that look uh, because you can't see their connection anymore I just really love the way that looks so let me have another look at what this poncho now looks like do you know what I'm I'm starting to like it all these crazy colors <laughs> oh my goodness yes so this is what it looks like to see what I mean about them floating <laughs> Right, so I hope this has helped you uh, for the further construction of your poncho. So, of course, like I said, repeat, repeat, repeat. You will find that every row gets longer. And the way I do it when I have to repeat colours like this is I put them in order. So I have a little box and I put the colours in order and I sort of go through them each time. So that helps enormously with not forgetting which colour you're supposed to be doing next. So thank you so very much for watching. I hope this video was useful and I will see you in the next one. Bye!